Now, a report from Oxford University's Our World in Data project has found that China has emitted more carbon dioxide over the past eight years than the United Kingdom has since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, which started, as you well know, in the middle of the 18th century. According to the report, the United Kingdom emitted 78 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide between 1750 and 2020, a figure that pales in comparison to China, which has emitted some 80 billion tonnes since 2013. Well, to break this all down, I'm joined, I'm delighted to say, by Senior Lecturer in Sustainable Construction and Climate Change, John Grant. John, surely you share the frustration of many of my viewers who are getting in touch right now and they're saying, Darren, Arthurs and Marthas in Britain are too afraid to put the heating on this winter, but China's burning more coal than Sauron's Mordor. How is that right? Well, it's not. No, no, nobody is saying China is right. I mean, oh, the, the, the challenges that we are up against at the moment is a are, are, are legion. You know, we have a climate catastrophe, our ecology is collapsing, and China is ignoring, for the most part, any immediate action. But, and I suppose there has to be a but, you know, the UK may have not emitted as much as China, but we still are the eighth largest emitter of carbon dioxide around the world since that period. So, you know, there is some responsibility, and we did sort of start this. And of course, my well, not of course, but my my research is this idea that we started the industrial revolution, and maybe we could we could help countries to move to a post carbon economy where we could have another industrial revolution, but one that doesn't burn the planet. You know, just an idea, and we can do that. Yeah. So I'm wondering, and I mean, this report also found that since 1990. The United Kingdom, which is, it, this isn't the narrative that we often hear, but the United Kingdom has actually reduced its carbon dioxide output the fastest amongst any other industrialised nation, with CO2 emissions fallen by 54.8%. Some of my viewers, it's, there's a split on this, some of my viewers are saying, well, Darren, if you get rid of every, you know, energy intensive industry in Britain, of course your carbon emissions are going to fall. And the other side say, happy, hunky dory, happy days, aren't we clever, we're doing amazing things. Where are you? Well, well, you know, it, it's both of those things, isn't it? We've closed I think virtually all of it, if not all of our coal-fired power stations, which are a big chunk. I, I, I'm not sure if we're above 50%, I, but, you know, but it is around 50%. Uh, and the other one is that, that heavy industry. And, and I'm sat here in Sheffield, the birthplace of mass steel production. And there are ways of making steel without producing huge amounts of carbon dioxide. And, and I am staggered that we are not funded by our government and the steel industry. And part of that is because it's foreign, isn't it? That, that you know, internalizing that so we could produce zero carbon steel, which will have an enormous value as we go forward. So, you know, I'm here to, to, to say that, yes, there is a huge problem and we are part of that. But there are amazing solutions that we could project forwards with all of our industrial know-how. We don't have the might that we used to have, but we are, you know, some incredible scientists and material scientists out there that can that can do the job and make some money here in the UK for a change. I'll have a bit so, of that. Yeah. I mean, John, I'm assuming then by your rhetoric there, talking about the positives that we've made, the advancements that we've made. You're not going to be gluing yourself to any of our motorways anytime soon. Well, I am desperately disappointed with the fact that the UK government is still giving licenses to explore for new oil and gas fields. That, that, in, in this situation where we're trying to head down to zero carbon by 2050, this to me is just scientifically well, it's close to insanity. You know, we should be looking at the opportunities of really cheap renewable energy and battery technology that isn't lithium based that can supply to our grids, which is out there, but also needs research. What we don't need is more oil and gas and certainly not, not fracking, which we just have no idea what the reserve is like. We just have an idea that it's out there. And it's, you know, how about we go with what we're certain about, which All is right. that the wind will blow. 
yeah. the sun will shine. I don't, do, I don't doubt that for a forward. second. The wind will blow often in this country, the sun shining less frequent. Yeah. But I'm wondering, though, okay. I'm wondering, a lot of my viewers struggling, they're too terrified, actually, to put the heating on at this time. And they hear you, John, and I say this with all the respect in the world, they hear you saying we shouldn't be exploring new gas sites here in this country when actually that could alleviate the burden on them because your wind turbines aren't going to power my viewers' gas boilers, are they? Well, you know, that's a really, really good point. And they are, have every right to be frustrated. Well, angry, forget frustrated. But do you know what? What hasn't been done? is helping these people reduce how much energy they use with a proper campaign to improve their energy efficiency. It's generally accepted that we can reduce how much energy we use in our homes by around 60%. And I think most people would prefer to, to reduce the amount of energy they, they get than get than pay some foreign power company a certain amount of money forever rather than, than, do, than, than, than reduce the, that through energy efficiency. So the solution, of course, is to help the poorest now. It's desperate. It's absolutely desperate. Um, but, you know, to improve their homes, which we can do, which I can do. I built the first house 20 years ago that had no heating in it. I know you won't believe me, but it's true. It has no primary heating in it at all. And it has never gone below 18 degrees in 20 years of people living in it. Zero. Zero. Yeah. And it costs so, no more to build than a normal house. And that's, I assume that's down to some super good insulation, is it not? Indeed. Yeah. So that's the answer. I agree with you. We need to yes. insulate British homes better because we're all drafty and what have you. But the realities are that this is the reality of life that we live in, right? This is the, the state of things as they are now. So right now we need gas in that transition period to net zero. Do you accept that at least? Well, and, and yeah, I'm not saying stop using fossil fuels. That, that would be, well, people would die. What I'm saying is we, we, we don't want to look for 10 years in the future, which is what new oil and gas fields are really talking about. You could maybe get them online a small amount within five years, but the major amounts would be somewhere between five and 10 years. And in that period, I could, with a proper program, save people much more energy than, than us hunting out more. So yeah, we have to use some coal and, that's not coal, oil and gas, these people's oil and gas thing. But we are transitioning to an electric only world. And it's going to happen if we're going to meet this zero carbon. And what we have to do is to head in that direction without breaking the system. Yeah. And, and if we just try and flip it from one to the other, it will, you're right, it'll just break. We have well, to John, prepare for this. Just, just finally, I wonder if you might mm -hmm. answer this question. The, of course. What, what is the, the point of uh, basically just exporting our emissions, which strikes me that's what we've done, saying actually energy intensive industry, let's send it all to China, give them the jobs and they can emit the carbon emissions whilst we here in this country, we're at what, 1% of global CO2? And we here pat ourselves on the back and say, oh, goody, goody, we've got rid of all of our jobs and sent them across to China, who are therefore then taking on our burden of carbon. What's the point in that? Yeah, well, you've nailed it, mate. You, you know it. This is completely out of order. You know, they are building a power station every other week, I think, that's fired by coal. This is this is wrong. We we have the know-how. We have the potential. We've now, for good or not, left Europe. We have control of our industrial capacity. What well, we left, need now not is a proper program to expand that. Yeah, perfect. John, we'll end it there. Senior Lecturer in Sustainable Construction and Climate Change, John Grant there. Thank you very much for your time.